I got wood. And I can use it to get you there. With this weird science effect that boggles my mind. There's a lot of uses for wood. You can build a house with it and you can heat that house with it. You can use it to cook, you can use it for decoration. But did you know that you could use it to power your car or your boat or your motorcycle or anything with an internal combustion engine? Before you go, well, yeah, duh, steam engine. That's an external combustion engine. And you can use it to power that too, but this is different. See, I'm not blowing smoke up your backside when I tell you that smoke from burning wood or other organic materials can be used in place of gasoline through a process called wood gasification. But before you can understand how smoke can power your car, you need to understand how fire burns. To get fire, you need three things. Oxygen, which we have in the air. Fuel source, in this case, would be our wood. And an ignition source, which is usually just a little bit of heat to set the mood for those two to start getting it on. You put air and wood together and you heat them up to Ron DeSantis' favorite temperature. Fahrenheit 451. Presto, you got fire. Now for all that wood or any fuel to efficiently burn, it needs a lot of air. If you don't give it enough air, all of that combustible fuel gets hot enough where it wants to burn, but it can't find any oxygen to ignite that flame. And when that happens, you get a smoke show. If you've ever started a fire, you'll notice when you're trying to get it going, there's a lot of smoke that comes off and you gotta blow on it, get it air. But then once it really gets going, that smoke kind of disappears. That's what's happening. Now this probably will come as a surprise to anybody who doesn't heat with a wood stove, but that smoke is flammable. So now how do you run your car off of it? Well, the first thing you gotta do is basically mount a great big wood stove onto your bumper. Then you gotta choke it down so it gets just enough air to keep a little bit of a fire going. Then you pipe all that smoky smoke from that fire through a filter that gets rid of the soot and the tar and all that gunk you don't want. Then you pipe that to a mixing valve so it can get mixed with some sweet, sweet air. Then you pipe it to the intake on the motor in your planes, trains, or automobiles. On second thought, the plane, probably not the best best application for this one. But anything else with a gas or propane or natural gas powered motor, or even a diesel, you just have to add a couple more steps to make that work. And then your motor sucks it in and it gives that smoke and air a spark. And in the words of William Hung, she bang. That's all there is to it. Away you go. You want to keep driving, you just keep shoving wood in her. I might be saying that's a cool thought, but it's obviously not too practical for real life applications because I've never seen one. But it's a lot more practical than you actually might think. Now sure, it's not going to be as easy or convenient as liquid fuel like gasoline where you just pump it into your car and go. But imagine, if you will, a time when pretty much every place in the world was trying to kill each other. We'll call it a world war. But even in the midst of a world war, life still needs to go on for civilians. And for that civilian life to go on, you usually need oil as well. But your government's like, no, you can't have any oil because we need it all so our people can and kill those people. Now, to keep the wheels on the bus going round and round on the home front, you need an alternative. Suddenly, wood gas looks a lot more practical. So practical, in fact, that by the early 1940s, nearly every civilian vehicle in continental Europe had been converted to wood gas. Gas stations that could no longer get gas at the time started selling wood instead. Basically, everybody drove around with a great big barbecue on their bumper and stopped every 30 or 40 miles to throw another log on the fire. This technology is also a really efficient heat source for heating your home, and it can also be used to make fuel not just from wood, but from coal or rubber or any other organic combustible fuel source. You can even capture that smoke and refine it further to make liquid fuel that you can just put in your gas tank, like regular gasoline or diesel. In fact, that is exactly what the Germans did. That's what powered most of their war machine. And the fact that a little wood can get you a long ways, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.